How about we start it off with a bonus question? A sharp tool is a blank tool. Fill in the blank. Half a point extra credit. Anyway, I'm getting this baby sharpened up so we can start our second test. Chapter 23, Roots, Stems, and Leaves. Let's get busy. Okay, we're down here in the garden. I got a couple of the plants that I started in the classroom here, and now they're in the nice uh, raised beds. Um, some of them are looking droopy, which probably means that they want some water, although plants don't have the capacity to want, so I shouldn't use that. Nevertheless, I've brought a watering can down, and so what I'm gonna do is water these. Oh, there we go, some delicious water. Okay, okay, take that, Swiss chard. All right, and some regular lettuce over there. Okay, well, I put some water into the soil. Now you need to tell me exactly how that water is going to get into the plants. All I can do is pour it on the soil. So these basil plants have been pretty finicky since we put them outside. Right now you can see they're kind of drooped over. They've wilted a bit. It was really sunny all day today until now. What do you think has happened on the underside of these basil leaves during the course of the day? Oh, hey there, guys. Suppose, Suppose you're building a house for a bird, and you'd like to put it on a tree. You put a nail in, you hang up the house, and there it is, a perfect birdhouse. Let's say you come back next year. Is the birdhouse higher? No, it's not. How come the birdhouse doesn't get higher as this alive tree grows taller? Okay, so I'm standing next to uh, a special kind of plant here. Uh, it's growing up and uh, clinging to some other trees. I don't particularly want this thing here, so I'm actually going to cut it. That, that woodpecker, woodpecker can, can shut up. up. When I cut it though, I want you to uh, notice something and tell me what's going on. So I'll cut it. Hopefully it doesn't hit me in the face. Oh, it fell away. That's all right, we'll use this part. So perhaps you're noticing something. There's some sort of liquid coming out of where I just uh, cut. So how was it possible, before I cut this, for all of this water to make it clear up the plant, which is going 50 some odd feet up? All this liquid is now just coming out into my hand. Mmm, delicious. So here's the same species of plant except we cut this one several days ago. And now this is what it looks like. Uh, there's also, we'll zoom in here, uh, a bunch of bugs on it, and they are simultaneously happy and several, several of them are encased, encased in this stuff, stuff and now dead. dead. Um, so what is all this stuff and why are the bugs attracted to it? Okay, well here's some strawberry plants. And this one specifically, check it out, it's starting to flower and therefore attract some uh, pollinators, but it takes a lot of energy and materials to build a flower. So how is this strawberry plant getting materials to this flower to make it grow? So what we wanna do is look at the inside of a, of a stem that's basically living, and the one way to do that is to cut uh, some sort of tree down. So make sure that when you're sawing at home, please, please don't, don't saw at home, uh, you take all those safety precautions. You got your safety glasses, you got your chaps, you got the chain brake on when you're ready to start up your chainsaw. And, uh, you know, when you cut that tree, you gotta have an escape route. So, be ready to get out of the way. Okay, since we cut that monster down, when we see inside the stem, we see a nice coloration pattern. We're seeing rings. Tell me about those rings. Why do we find ring-like structures inside the stem of this particular plant? What's the point of the plant growing like that? Okay, hotshots. 
let's say I put you on the end of this pen and BAM! Send you into the leaf. I want you to explain to me each and every layer of tissue you would encounter on your way from the top down through the middle all the way out the bottom of that leaf.